Hello beautiful souls. I really hope you're well and you had a good couple of weeks. And I really hope you made a wish and I wish for you that it'll all come true. So first things first, I must apologize for not releasing the video last week. There were some complications with my music license and I just didn't want to risk getting a copyright claim. I've had that before and it gets quite messy. It was all resolved beautifully in the end, but it was a prelude to a couple of very stressful weeks. And as I'm recording this, which is the 27th of October, Simon's been away in the UK all week, and I'm hoping to pick him up from Kalamata Airport tonight. So what you're seeing here was all recorded some two weeks ago, and I have some catching up to do. The weather's been absolutely beautiful, and we've been basking in the most gorgeous, warm Indian summer with spectacular sunsets and midnight skies. And whilst it all looks beautiful, life has been pretty disjointed and scattered lately, and that never bodes well for me. But let me take you along and show you what we've been up to. Morning lovely people, um, Simon and I are in Athens, um, we're very close to the Acropolis, you just saw it now. Um, we're, we're pretty close to the centre so um, we're, this time we're on the other side of the Acropolis, last time we were in Plaka on the other side towards the um, west, this time we're on the east side of it and it is simply because I am getting my new passport so um, I need a new passport I'm Dutch so I need to go to the embassy and the embassy is literally just across the road so when you see that building there that's the embassy a really good spot with the hotel and it was actually quite pleasant and we went for a lovely walk yesterday just across the big park and went into Plaka and had a nice meal so um, but it literally is just a flying visit but Athens is nuts it's vast it's busy it's all the things that you kind of expect from a super metropolis with millions of inhabitants and then this kind of mediterranean craziness that you will find in rome in milan in um you know all the southern kind of um big cities where traffic is just mad and the city just never ever stops it's just mental so, so it's um, an amazing city it's nuts it's bonkers and you just need to roll with it go in for a couple of days and they just come out like he yeah rub it in the headlights and just think oh my god that's so busy and for us even just one day isn't it it's just yeah. it's like help <laughs> and people live like this every day is like that's nuts So this is the stadium where the first official modern Olympics actually took place. So imagine the crowds cheering and uh, yeah, just an amazing piece of history again. It's a real yeah. shame because every time we come we think, oh, we wish we'd have more time here because there is so much to see in Athens. Um, but then we've got the dogs and we haven't got dog sitters and, you know, it just makes it all very complicated. But Athens you could spend days, weeks in exploring, it's just incredible, so... It's this, for a highly sensitive person, neurodiverse person, so much going on, it just sends me spinning. It's like sound everywhere, noise everywhere, people everywhere, it's just bonkers <laughs> I'm just I always come out of here and just take a deep breath and think oh my god I can breathe it's honestly it's just overwhelming for me that is the reason why I live on a mountain between the mountains and the sea far far away from all of this we're just killing a bit of time because my appointment is at 11 30 and it's now 10 30 so we're just having a walk through one of the beautiful parks here
city and then you go into a park and you can hear the hustle and bustle around you but other than that it's like far far from the maddening crowd and they're just real oases of peace and quiet and greenery and it's just so beautiful. Ah, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's all done, thank God. It always makes me so nervous, this stuff. Like, stupid bureaucracy, passports. Permission to stay and all that, whether that's UK or here, makes me very nervous. Anyway, it's done. I'm gonna pick up the car and go home. I don't know about you, but I love to go on a road trip. And driving through Greece is one of the most spectacular things I've ever done. The never ending blue skies, the mountainous landscape, and the amazing roads that have been built thanks to the funding through the European Union. It's a dream. Once you leave the main towns and join the national motorways, there's hardly anyone on the road and it is easy to just cruise along and be absorbed by the beauty of the landscape. Before I came to Greece for the first time in 2019, I never knew it was such a rugged landscape. I had this idea of endless beaches, the islands and vast plains, but I never knew it had so many high mountain ranges. Whenever I go on a trip to Athens or elsewhere, I get a real itch to go travelling again and explore not only more of Greece, but the world in general. I still have this dream to drive across the US, New Zealand and Australia, but with having committed to the dogs and not home here in Greece now, that will have to wait a little while. But who knows where life will take us. For now, the Marnie is our home and renovating our little stone house between the mountains and the sea. I look forward to finally spending more time with Simon and making our home cosy and beautiful for the winter. What day is it today, Simon? Wednesday. Wednesday or Thursday? No, it's Thursday, right? Is it? I don't know. Yeah. Wednesday or Thursday? Monday, Tuesday. When did we go to Athens? Monday. <laughs> anyway, it's the day after Athens. 16th. <laughs> 16th. We know that. It's the 16th. It's so it's Wednesday. Um, so we had an amazing time in um, Athens. It was a quick visit, just like, you know, in out, just to get a passport sorted. And we went out for dinner and made the most of the time. Ran around Ikea. Not enough time. Um, so... Oh, Simon is very proud. Anyway, so we're back and um, seeing that we've got both sides of the kitchen in. I don't even know. Did I show you this? No, I didn't. Not the full thing. Let me show you first of all. So this side is now in. And the only thing that's missing here is the washing machine. That's going to go in at some point. So, But we're ordering a new one that fits with the kitchen. The other one is very, very old anyway. And now we're just looking at how to finish this off because we want to pull everything together. So Simon has just put the level down between the two and he's super proud because look, it's bang on in the middle. So we're debating, Simon had a, a solution which sadly is already taken away, but we just put some cardboard here just to see how it looks and it would have gone kind of just diagonally until there. But we still really are thinking about um, basically just making a template of this whole area. And then the question is, can we still reach? I probably can't. Um, Simon can reach and I'm just, I can reach just. 
do it like this again because you're just looking at the wall at the moment. So Simon is here, bless him. <laughs> so yeah, so um, again, this is where it would be and I could just reach the edge. the edge. But this would all be kind of storage jars anyway, but it would give us a massive extra workspace. And also we could sit here and eat breakfast if we wanted to, if all of this would be worktop but let's see so that's kind of the thing that we're debating right now what to do to finish it off nicely and pull the whole kitchen together because it looks amazing I think. um but yeah that end bit just needs some work now so wait and see Packing a few more of my our kitchen belongings as the kitchen is kind of functional now. And these plates that you just saw, uh, they were my nans. So they, I think they collected them. It was just one of those things whenever you bought a pack of butter or something in the 70s, 80s, you could collect stamps and then you would get presents this is one of them and I have loved this um, dinner set ever since she's had it it's just so colorful so very Dutch as well so um, it's a real joy to actually unpack that again and have it ready so yeah and here's another treasure we haven't unpacked these plates since we moved from Theria which is now crazy three years ago we uh, got these beautiful sea colored plates and it's so nice to unpack them that's nuts isn't it but yeah so they all need a good wash so these are going to be washed up but yeah what a delight to find old beautiful things things of beauty simple little things that's all you need in life um yeah so really happy with that like ah uh, look I can't wait to have all the beautiful little knickknacks out again and yeah no, and these we bought, we got them from um, Jumbo I do sorry I look like I've been dragged through the hedge backwards um, which is probably not far off <sighs> the way I'm feeling at the moment <laughs> just unpacking things I don't know about you it's probably something that comes with age as well is every object that you pick especially when it's been kind of bought with sentiment or being gifted to you just holds a story and that's what I'm doing right now I'm just going down memory lane and reminiscing about artifacts and things that we've got so for example this was gifted to me by a lovely friend um, because turtle is sea turtle is one of my favorite animals and my spirit animal um, or one of my spirit animals so this bowl was traveled many a time and it's still with me and I'm really happy with that and then also we just found this in the boxes and it's a little garlic pot um, and that was one of the first things that we kind of bought together um, when we moved in together in Lanscove in Polpero. So, you know, that's been traveling with us for six years. It's nuts, but it's little things like that that um, kind of get a real value or a meaning for you. And I'm not usually sentimental like that, but this is really sweet. Just picking up a few bits and bobs and just thinking, ah, that's really nice and it holds a story. lovely people one of the things that I really love the most at the moment is cooking in our new kitchen and one of the things that I adore here in Greece is the amount of 
fresh, homegrown, local produce that you can get at the markets and then just cook a stunning meal with that. So you just can't compare the vegetables or um, other ingredients that you can get in Greece here. They are so packed with flavour and um, they just have that lovely consistency. They don't taste watery or anything. They're just full of flavour and it just makes such a huge difference with cooking. So, and today I'm going to make a, a cauliflower coconut um, curry. It's one of the foods that we really enjoy and with the days drawing out and the nights drawing in now, it's a lovely um, kind of warming dish that we, uh, we love to eat. So join me whilst I'm cooking here. Thank you. 